Hey Matt, today I wanna to show you five tools under $30 I think every woodworker should consider for their shop. If you're interested in any of these tools I show today, I'll put links in the description below if you can go check them out for yourself. Number one on the list is the Saw Set Pro. This thing is awesome if you do any type of miter cuts anytime. This is a great little tool to have. It looks like the old school protractors we used to use way back when I was in grade school, but it has unique features on it that makes setting your saw up for the cut super easy. On one side of the Saw Set Pro, you'll see that it says single, and on the opposite side, you'll see that it shows double miter, and there's a reason for that. Let me show you. All you need to use this is a T-bevel and the Saw Set Pro. If I needed to know what that angle was I needed to cut for both pieces, in other words, a double miter, we're gonna use the double miter side. We're gonna take our T-bevel, it says place T-bevel here, so you're gonna set that on the bottom of the T-bevel or on the bottom of the Saw Set, and you're gonna move this over until it touches that piece right there that actually sticks up. That's basically a catch to tell you where to stop at. That's showing us a 10 degree angle to set the saw. From there, we're gonna move the saw over to the 10 degree angle, lock it down. A perfectly matched miter corner, simple as that. Check that out. It'll also easily find single angles. When I was building this miter station, I almost or I thought about putting angled drawer faces on here so that it, it stayed flush instead of being inset. I actually preferred the inset look, so I went this way. But if I had wanted to put that angle on there, then each side of those drawer faces would have needed to be angled. How to find that angle easily, simple as this. You'll take your T-bevel, line it up on this outside edge as well as on that inside edge, that's our angle. Gonna be using the single side of the Saw Set Pro. It says place T-bevel here, in other words, on the bottom looking at about a 22 and a half degree angle. So if I use a square piece and put it at, at that angle, you see that it would just, it would look kind of funky right there on that edge. However, when I cut that 22 and a half degree angle, if I put that drawer face on, then you can see that it would look really nice and finished. This thing takes quick work out of trying to figure out angles and math, and it's just a super simple tool that works extremely well and it's from a small family owned business out of Canada. So if you ever deal with angles at any time, one of these would be handy to have in the toolbox. If you do a lot more trim work, there's a few instructional videos on SawSet's website that you can check out for yourself. I'll link their site down below. Number two on the list is clamps, and not just any clamp, a very unique one that I find very useful, under $30. These are two different F-style clamps from Bessie. This is a traditional one. This is the new gear-driven model, and I, I just love the way they work because they are a space saver. To adjust the clamping, you actually twist this handle that's on the bar itself. So that saves this little bit of space here, and that's what's great about these. Let me show you. If you watched me build this miter station, I had to cut a T-track in the top so that I would have a stop block system. I used a board as a straight edge to guide my router so that I could cut a good straight line. These style clamps wouldn't work because they won't fit under here without contacting the surface below. They also would be in the way if you turn them up this way. However, these clamps, because of their unique design, I was able to slide that right in there, clamp my board down tight, then I could cut that groove with the router. I call these new, but they've been out for a couple years. They act like regular clamps as far as how they slide up and down. They come in various sizes, even the 24 inch, this is a 12, even the 24 inch is under $30, I'll link to both. Let me show you something else they can do real quick. These have 450 pounds of clamping pressure, so that's more than enough than you'll ever need for most clamping applications. What's great about the space-saving design is if you've ever used a traditional style clamp to clamp down something flat against a surface, you know how difficult it can be to actually get your hand there to twist this to get a good clamping pressure on that. With the gear drive, you don't have that problem so long as this is tall enough. If it's too short or too thin a material, but inch and a half, inch to anything over about an inch, you can get a good clamp on. Plenty of room to manipulate the clamp mechanism back here without having to interfere with the table. Just super cool tool. If you work in tight spaces, or you may at some point, these will come in handy. I recommend picking up a couple. Before I tell you about the number three tool that's under $30, let me tell you about our bill plans, which are also under $30. If you go check out our online store, 731woodworks.com slash store, you'll see that we have various different build plans available to help you make awesome projects. We've also bundled some of those plans together to help you save even more. At checkout, if you use the code AWESOME, I'll give you 20% more off anything you buy. Go check it out. 
If you have a work table that has T-tracks, they can be invaluable to actually hold things down while you're working on them, like sanding, routing, many other different things that you can, you need stuff to stay still while you're working on it. I have a couple of different styles here, but these don't work as good as these. Let me show you. You can see the blue ones have an arch to them, very similar to the gray, but the blue ones use a washer, washer, to pivot over that slotted hole. Whereas the Masca brand, basically, I don't know what you call that. It's like a pivot point, and it allows you to get different angles and keep that pressure on the clamp. If you don't have T-Tracks on your work surface, they're super easy to install with a three quarter inch bit. I use T-Track clamps all the time. If I was needing to work on the end of this board or to sand this board or whatever I needed for it to be still and not move on me, you can use these in either direction. So if you need a little more reach, you can use the long side. If you need to be a little more clamping pressure straight down, use the shorter side. Typically I use a couple, that way it's held in two different places. Once I get it snug, I can work on this board and it's not gonna move unless I want it to. Like I can really wrench down and pull it, but as far as normal working, you're not gonna need to do that. I mean, it's just gonna be rock solid. Where I found the benefit of these is because of the way they're made, this keeps that even clamping pressure down with that half circle piece that goes into that groove on taller stock that you need to hold. This is where this really shines because a normal one won't fit as good as this. Let me show you that. While these still work, you can see how the pressure of the, the clamp is on the front of that washer pushing down. It just doesn't hold as solid. You can also use these on the CNC to hold down your work. Although I would be very cautious because these bolts do stick up. So you wanna make sure you're not gonna hit that when your CNC is moving and they're aluminum. So make sure they're well away from the cut area. These come in two packs for under 30 bucks and it's just a good value all around. Next on the list is a wood glue hack trick something you need for your wood glue. I've used the glue bot for years and while it's a decent product, I wouldn't call it great. Uh, one main issue is I always lose the little rubber cap thing and this tip stops up consistently. All the way down in here, I wind up digging it out. I actually wind up cutting the end of it and then it just becomes useless and it's just, there's glue in there and I never use it. Simple, very cheap fix. Thanks to All Red Woodworking for coming up with this tip. So why condiment bottles? So this is like ketchup and mustard bottles. Glue doesn't stick to plastic, so you're not gonna have to worry about that. It comes out nice and easy. There's no getting stuck on there and all that stuff. And even if it dried right at the tip, all you have to do is take a little something and pop in there and then just, you're good to go again. I like how easy the glue flows out of here. You can do real thick beads. You can do thinner beads if you want. Like just however much pressure you're putting on there, you can flood an area and it's just less mess than the other way. I will say this about the glue bot. The only reason I keep it around and deal with the frustration of this tip always clogging up is for vertical gluing. In other words, when I was putting the trim or the face trim on this miter station and things like that, I can hold the bottle upright and squeeze it. The glue, the way when you squeeze it comes from the bottom and out the spout so you can glue like this. For any other normal applications, I'll be grabbing my glue ketchup bottle. Last but certainly not least, I've heard so much about this stuff, I'm almost tired of hearing about it. But I had to pick up this 3M extract paper that everybody's talking about how amazing it is. It's less than $30 a pack for 50 disc in any grit that you're looking at. Or you can pick up a sample pack like this that has 12 pieces of paper in there with varying grits. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. I've been buying this Festool granite paper and while it works really well, it's really expensive. This is much less expensive, so if it works even better, that's gonna be a positive in my book. I need some more 120 grit. I also needed some 220, and I got some 320. As you can see, it's you can see through it because it's that mesh, so it'll still pull the air through there. If you got a dust extractor, it'll, it'll match any of the sanders you may have. I'm glad they printed on the back what the grit is, that way you don't get them confused. This little sorter box that I have here, very inexpensive. I'll also link that in the description below. That way it keeps everything organized. I can keep my sanding pads, different grits, everything just in its own separate place. So the way this works, it'll stick to most any of your hook and loop sanding pads that should already be on your sander. Backing is kind of fuzzy feeling, so almost like a hook and loop. We're gonna try it out on this tube six. That's pretty impressive. Like that was less than the 60 seconds probably. I've been messing around with epoxy, making some epoxy cutting boards or serving trays, things like that. Also have these little hammers I made and they have quite a bit of epoxy sticking off the back. And one problem with epoxy is it clogs up sandpaper really fast. 
see what it does with this. You can see where that epoxy dust was, it's gone because it got sucked up in there when I just hit it with that board. Or you can use something like this sanding eraser. These are very inexpensive too and will prolong the life of your sandpaper. Even the feel of the grit, like you can still feel it. A lot of times when you're using regular sandpaper, it gets clogged up. The old pencil test on some quilted maple, try that out. Same sheet of sandpaper we've been using. Now I'm gonna do the other half with the granite 120. I actually ruined this piece trying to sand that tab off. It's just not made for that. You should have just cut that and then sand because it took all the grit off of it. But that's a little extreme application. Put a new piece on there and it zip right through it. Because it is hook and loop, it'll work on your sanding mouses as well. I use these all the time. I actually featured this in a previous video, but. I think this stuff comes in three inch, five inch, six inch, uh, even bigger than that. But for the most of us, the five or the six is all you're gonna need. That five inch Festool paper, I was paying like 35 or $40 for a 50 pack. This is less than $30, around $20 when I bought this per 50 pack. It's quite a bit of savings, especially on something you're just using up pretty quickly. So I like the 3M cost and I like the performance. I'm switching. If you like this video, you'll love these five tools under $30. They're awesome. Click that box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Also, five more tools you may need right there. Go check both those videos out. You'll love them.